Namaste yogis and lovers of wellness and welcome to Mindful Monday. We call it Mindful Monday because it starts with an M and also because these videos help us learn ways to be mindful about our well-being and our self-care and it's basically just a video talking about something that I think is crucial to somebody's well-being or can be crucial to somebody's well-being if they take interest in the subject that I'm talking about. Before we get into today's topic, if you are new to my channel, I want to welcome you in and thank you so much for being here. My name is Vanessa Blair Ferris. I am a certified yoga instructor. It is just my passion to provide yoga and wellness to anybody that needs it, but especially those healing from trauma. So if that is something that you're interested in, I encourage you to subscribe hit the notification bell, make sure that you're getting notifications, and make sure that you come back here just as often as you need to. I am so grateful to see everybody watching and leave a comment below uh, any video you watch. Let me know your thoughts, and I look forward to hearing from all of you soon. And also make sure to check me out on Instagram at yogi.blair. There I post videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays and there are things that you're not always going to find here and sometimes the videos do coincide so you can relate to some things or you can find information that I had mentioned in something else over there. So make sure that you check that out, make sure that you follow me and I look forward to seeing you over there as well. And in the description below, I am going to include my email address. That is where you can send any video requests, any questions about yoga or wellness, or if you just want to share your story with me, I would love to hear what you guys have to say. So you can always email me below. I also have a monthly newsletter. So if you want to be subscribed to that, make sure that the subject of your email, if you send one to me, says newsletter, and that will let me know to subscribe you to my monthly list. And as always, with every video comes a little disclaimer. I am a certified yoga instructor. I am not a specialist in anything else. So while a lot of these videos talk about other things that I think embody wellness, that doesn't mean that I am an expert in any of those things. Uh, I am not a makeup artist, I'm not an esthetician, I'm not a doctor. So make sure that if you have concerns regarding your skin or regarding a physical ailment that you're coming to my yoga videos to help deal with, make sure that you're always consulting with your doctor or your dermatologist or anybody else that may be an expert in that area. So moving right along, today we are talking about one of my very favorite things that makes me feel well. One of my absolute go-to must-have things to keep me living my wellest life. And that thing for my wellness is the baby. This is Kiki. I want to make sure that she is in the camera here. She is my nine-year-old Pomeranian and she has been by my side since day one. She is such a feisty and funny little thing. She is a little camera shy. Um, I asked her if she wanted to be on the camera and she started to walk away into the other room. And, um, but, and I, I called after her, I said, Kiki, don't you want to be famous? And she came running back in and she po poked her head in the doorway. She's like, sure. So um, yeah, this is, this is my best friend right here. She has been through everything everything in my life, all the crazy things. I got her when I was 18 going on 19 and now I'm 28 going on 29 and she'll be 10 this year in November. And she's seen everything, everything in my life. This dog has been there for, she's seen the terrible breakups, the horrible times. She's been there for the best times of my life. And this is a crucial part of my well being is just having this friend, this best friend. And I know some people that might not have animals don't understand best friend and you really you're calling a dog your best friend. Like, first of all, don't make fun of me because I don't have real friends. And she is a real friend. She is this feisty, fiery creature. You can't tell now because she's being super shy, but she is such a diva and such a funny dog that just knows how to work a room and get everybody's attention on her and she's hilarious. She's funny, she knows when I'm upset and she she's so 
tired, honey. Hi, here. Why so sleepy? She knows. Um, she knows when I'm upset. She knows what to do to make me feel better. She is just my best friend, and I'm not embarrassed saying that. I don't. I don't really care that I don't relate to people as much as I do this dog. She is just. She's the best and she doesn't always get in camera. She's she's pretty private. She doesn't really like her business being, you know, put out there on the internet. She's a pretty big deal. She doesn't really like the paparazzi, but she's so funny. And I think that having an animal, whether you're a cat person or a dog person, I think having an animal is a crucial part of everybody's well-being that likes animals. And um especially if you have anxiety or you deal with certain things like that, having that companion that is so intuitive and just knows and knows what to do to make it better. There is a video, which I will link below in the description of this video that I found on YouTube a while ago. It makes me cry all the time. Every time I watch it, it makes me just tear up so much. And um, I don't want to give away too much of it, but it's basically these people got people and their dogs to the studio to film this experiment where they monitored people's like blood pressure, I think, and heart rate especially when they were separated from their dog. And then they monitored what happened when they brought the dog into the room. And it was so powerful to see all of these people just, when their dog came in the room, what it did to them physically and then these people were all talking about their dogs and getting teary-eyed about how amazing their dog is and how their dog is their best friend and it's just I think that if you are an animal and it's okay if you're not if you're watching this video and you're like I don't really like dogs or I don't really like animals at all first of all you're crazy basically if you don't like dogs but I do know that there are some people out there that might be allergic and might have other things you know that they're afraid of animals or whatever. I, totally fine. Totally fine if you don't relate to this video, but I just had to put out there that the most crucial part of my well being, the most important thing for me is this companion right here. She is everything, and you see a lot of her on Instagram. I do try to sneak little pictures and videos of her in there once in a while. They're always there. And they're just so sweet and they're just so cute and you're gonna give them a ton of different nicknames and they're just I love her I love my dog I absolutely love my dog and she is an incredible majestic rare creature and she she's the unicorn of dogs and so today I had something that I thought might coincide with this video I got the new 35i Morphe, what is this, Icy Fantasy Palette. And I thought maybe today, in honor of Miss Kiki, we can do a look that is unicorn inspired because she is the rarest unicorn of dogs. And I thought it would be a cute way to tie it together. Uh, I basically am just throwing the whole not doing as many makeup videos out the window in 2020. I can't stop myself. This is who I am and this is what I like to do. And I'm really trying to gear myself towards just being genuine in front of a camera. Not that I'm ever not genuine, but I feel like I hold back because there are students of mine from my yoga classes that come to watch these videos. And I'm worried that if I swear, or if I say something, they might be offended. And there's that element of professionalism as somebody that gets in front of a group of people and teaches to them. I do need to keep a certain level of composure in these videos. I can't just, you know, be walking around dropping F-bombs everywhere because that, that reflects in a way that I wouldn't want it to for people that come to my classes and also watch these videos. But these videos are a little different. The wellness videos and the yoga videos are different parts of my personality. But I am trying to loosen up a little bit. That's something I've been working on since I was five. 
was just calming down and not being so uptight. So today we're gonna do a look with this. I'm gonna probably film the rest of this tomorrow when I have a clean shirt on that doesn't entail me holding my dog and having dog hair all over it. Um, little trick, guys. I figured something out with these. Um, I hate these plastic things. I like to know the names of my shades. I like to keep that handy, but uh, I hate that it just is constantly falling out. It's all over the place. So I took two pieces of tape and taped this to my palette. So now it's always there and I don't have to worry about it falling down. If you have a regular Morphe palette that has the edges, I did the same thing. I just uh, looped the tape and stuck it to the inside because you do have this edge around the plastic container. So if you wanna keep those and you don't know what to do with them, you don't know how to get them to stay, put some tape on it. So we're gonna fast forward about 24 hours and we'll get into today's unicorn inspired makeup look in honor of my dog, Kiki. All right, so we fast forwarded about 24 hours and we are back and ready to go. Uh, excuse my hair, uh, you all have probably seen by most of these videos by now that I do have curly hair and a lot of times I do diffuse my hair because I feel like my curl just looks better that way but on weeks that I don't really feel like doing anything to my hair or I feel like I don't want to put any heat on it I do leave it in braids until I am ready to take it out and then it looks kind of curly and just it's easy to manage so I'm gonna leave these in until we're done with my makeup so that my hair is kind of out of the way these cowlicks are just out of this world. Miss Kiki is sitting off to the side here today. She's on her little special sheet that we put on the bed so that she doesn't get dog hair everywhere in case you were wondering. I've had so many people, weirdly enough, when I'm like, oh, I have a Pomeranian, they're like, oh, they don't shed, right? They shed a lot. I vacuum twice a week and I should vacuum way more often. But um, yeah, so she's gonna sit there off to the side. Hopefully she is just chilling. Hi, BB. Hi, BB. You're so cute. So as promised today, we are going to do a unicorn inspired look with the Morphe 35i because Kiki is a rare majestic beast, just like unicorns. So we're gonna get right into it. I absolutely love this sweatshirt. I was wearing a cute tank top. I'm like, oh, I'll look actually cute for once in my videos. And then I put this on and I'm just, so I live in this thing all winter. So let's just, As I mentioned in these juicing videos, this is not meant to like be the most delicious thing ever that you make, but it does have a lot of nutritional value. I forgot to put the agave in it because I really didn't think that it made that big of a difference, but it does. Moving right along. First, we need to prime the skin. I have cleansed my skin. I moisturized, I did all my skincare and everything that I need to do for the day. I don't plan on leaving my house until it's already dark outside, so I really don't need to wear SPF. Our house faces away that the sun doesn't really come through the windows so much, and I shut the blinds a lot anyway because I'm basically a vampire. So we're gonna go in with our Silk Canvas Primer, and we're not gonna do what I did in my last video. I'm going to take that rice grain size amount, give or take, about that much. Now you'll see the line in the spatula that these come with and it says that you're supposed to fill the spatula to that line, but it also says to use a rice grain size amount. I really don't understand as far as instructions go, but I find that by using just this tiny amount here and putting that on one section of my face and then grabbing another tiny amount and putting that on another part, get that more even. And then using another one of those tiny, I feel like you just avoid overusing this product because if you overuse the Silk Canvas Primer from Tatcha, you can run into some issues. And I do like to, as I have mentioned a thousand times, let this sit on my skin for a hot minute before going in. I am not going to use the Blendiful today to apply my primer. It was suggested to me by 
somebody that I should maybe try going back in with my fingers to apply my primer instead of using the Blendiful. It might work better for my skin. So I'm gonna just, now that hands have been clean, I did wash them before sitting down. I feel like I should always mention that. I'm going to work this in. And I do kind of like to pat this into my skin, especially in those areas that you might tend to have bigger pores. I know that's probably something that I've also said a hundred times and I should just stop. I was reading about this product and it said that it has like a, it's a uni, it's not white. It's got like a pinky orangey hue and it said that it was like a universal color corrector. I don't know if I believe that, but I don't really do any color correcting just because I'm not that talented. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna let this work into my skin while I do my makeup, my eye makeup. I, let's just try that again. First, I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows off camera. Okay, so brows are on and they really don't look that much different. So we're gonna start with priming the eyelids. I am using the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Priming Potion. And this is the original. I got the little baby one. I wanted to try it out before I bought the big one. So my husband got it for me. For Christmas and I just kind of apply this to my lids like so I can only use this I've noticed on my lid I can't use it under my eye I have to use my eye cream which says it also works as an eyeshadow primer but I noticed that this works with keeping eyeshadow from creasing better because a cream is providing moisture whereas this is a little more of a waxy consistency. So I really don't know, as per usual, what I wanna do with this today. I'm gonna have a look here and see if I can get some inspiration. Okay, so I'm kind of at a loss here for what to do. I mean, oops, I just stuck my finger right in that. Um, I've seen a lot of really cute things online. Let's maybe look up some. All right, so let's, oh, that looks like shit. I'm not saying mine's gonna look any better. I'm just saying that that looks like shit. Um, okay, so I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this, but can I enlarge? There we go. I'm kind of liking this. I like the use of the different colors. We've got some greenish blues, some purples, even some peachy colors in there. So it's a mix of a lot of stuff. I might do something kind of like that, but maybe I'll just cut my crease a little. Or do I want to do like a rainbow? I kind of really have been liking, I've been seeing other people on YouTube do like a rainbow where one side is your red side and your other side is like your green, purple, blue. Keeping in mind that I have to teach a class later and I will go there with this makeup on. Let's just, mm, let's just do the cut crease. We'll play it safe today and I will play around more later. So I need my mirror. And I've seen a lot of people talk about how this is not that blendable or when you blend, it blends away other color and it's not very um, opaque. So, and I just bought it anyway, because that's what I do. So we're gonna pick a transition shade and I'm thinking that I'm going to dip into Coral Cloud. And I'm just going to actually use my ring finger to make sure that my primer's still happy where it is. Oh, 
All right, I mean, so far I don't mind this. Um, I feel like it went on nicely. It's a pretty color, it goes with my skin tone and everything, and it doesn't seem to be too light. It doesn't seem to not wanna stay where I put it. So let's see what happens when I go into another color. I think I'm gonna go in with Sky High, which is this pretty pink right here. If we're gonna do that sort of, ooh, there goes my other palette because I don't have enough space. Which thinking about it, I probably should have put the coral color on last because that might not blend so well with some other colors, but we'll see. I don't hate this. And I know I'm just getting into it. And I know that I'm also not a professional or talented at this in any way. I don't, so far it's not bothering me the colors look nice. I feel like a lot of people are expecting the opacity of more vibrant colors and the pigment of these loud colors. Like for example, Jeffree Star's eyeshadows are super pigmented, they're super bright. But when you have these pastels, I feel like they're just not, like that's not, and I know I'm not a makeup artist and I'm not thinking of this in a makeup term, but when I think of a pastel in an art kit, pastels are made to put on and blend away. So there's almost like this effect of them almost not being there. And I'm not saying that that's what you should do with your eyeshadow because you obviously want it to be there, but it might be a lighter color and it might sort of look like this watercolor effect. And I was reading somebody else had commented on something saying that Pony's inspiration for collabing with Morphe for this palette, she wanted it to be kind of like watercolor. So I could see where you might want it to be a little more translucent. I don't know. Again, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I don't know what the crap is going on here. So far, these two colors blended nicely together. I think they look pretty on. I don't know how they look in the camera. They are pretty light and I am pretty fair and it probably is all just blending together, but it's fine. So I'm gonna not use a fluffy blending brush. I'm gonna go in with a more compact brush. I really probably need more brushes in my kit if I'm gonna pretend to know sort of what I'm ever talking about, which as you all know, I don't ever know what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna make sure that there's nothing on this brush that's gonna mess with my look because I didn't wash my brushes this weekend. All right, so we need that purpley color. So I'm thinking right off the bat here, we're gonna go into Dreamer. And hopefully this doesn't look like shit over top of these kind of more orangey tones. I know about color theory. That's a joke, I know nothing about color theory, otherwise I would have done this the opposite way. And I'm just sort of packing this on in my crease. And this is kind of how I do all crease eyeshadow because I feel like when I use a blending brush, even if it's a little more dense right out the get, I, um, I was gonna say right off the get go and right out the gate and it just turned into a stupid sentence. So, this is why I spend hours editing because I'm like, I sound stupid. I don't know what I'm talking about. Here, I'm rambling. Hear me. It's fine. And now I'm gonna take a little bit more of a dense blending brush. Make sure there's nothing on it. And I'm gonna blend that in. I think this is starting to look pretty. Now you probably can't see it as well in the camera because I'm sitting kind of further back and these are lighter colors, but we will get there. I'll take my hair down and we'll show you everything up close once it's all done. So now I need to cut my crease. So I'm gonna take my concealer brush from Sephora and get my concealer, which if you don't know by now is Cover Effects Power Play. And I'm gonna take some of this off of the excess that's on the wand. I'm going to create the shape that I want on my lid. 
cue fast forward. All right, and because I just wanna cover up this concealer real quick, I'm going to go into my lid shade that I want to use here. And I think I'm gonna start with Chill Thrill, which is this aqua shade, right, meow? Right, meow, yeah. And I'm going to kind of pat this on. Everything's falling. Ooh. Setting spray makes it look nice and vibrant. I know we do that a lot with our shimmery shades that we really want to pop, but I don't dislike it for this either. That's pretty. All right, so we're gonna blend all that out in a minute, but I really just wanted to keep my concealer from budging while I cut my other crease. So again, just a tiny bit of concealer off of that wand. You know what, I need to take this off. These sleeves is getting everywhere. Okay. So now I kind of need to blend this together. I need this little guy again. We're gonna go back into that purple shade I used earlier and start to pack that on the outer corner. And then we kind of need to blend these two sides together. So I'm thinking of maybe using this into the blue shade, right? I don't know if that's even in frame. I really could use a monitor like all the professionals have. Donate to my YouTube channel. Get me a monitor, get me a camera, get me some lighting. All right, yes, so I'm gonna take a flatter brush and I'm just gonna go right into that and see what we can do here to sort of blend these two together. I'm just kind of working straight down that harsh line there to try to pull these two parts together. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in with my fluffy blending brush, shouldn't have anything on it at this point. All the products should be off of it. And I'm just gonna make sure that everything's blending together like one happy family. And this is where we're really gonna see if this stays where it is or if it starts to blend away. All right, I mean, I think that, that did a pretty decent job. Everything looks to be okay. I did go back in with my fluffy brush and just pick up a little tiny, like one hit of that purple and kind of packed it in and then blended it out. But other than that, it really didn't bother me. I'm going to clean up my under eye. Get okay, so I did want to come back in here just to show you how I have been using my Blendiful lately. And to really blend this, I do take this and just make sure that everything is kind of placed where I want it. And once I have a thinner layer of concealer, I bring it up towards the lash line. I try not to be too heavy handed with my product. All of, just two dots of concealer on each eye covers my under eye. And I know this is a super bright concealer. I think I need to go a shade darker, which is something I never thought I'd say in my life. I'm gonna make sure to press in with my finger one more time to press that product into any areas of my under eye that like to crease. And then I'm just gonna bring that underneath and pat that underneath. Once I get my foundation on, it looks a lot less weird and white. All right, so now I'm going to put on my foundation and everything. We're gonna come back to the eyes and finish everything out in a minute. 
Okay, so after I go in with my foundation, with my foundation brush, I use stippling motions, maybe a little bit of buffing. There is a tiny bit of texture up here on my forehead, so I really do think that that is just dry skin, um, which is annoying because I've never had dry skin before, and <sighs> Accutane just ruined me. So I am going to give it a shot now with the Blendiful and use this like I would with my beauty sponge, going in and it blending things out, making this look a little less white cast, and just getting everything sort of blended. So I'm gonna do that, and we'll be right back again. Okay guys, so here is the final look that I came up with today, pretty unicorn-esque. I don't mind these colors. I don't mind this palette. I know a lot of people had some concerns, but I really felt like it worked pretty well being that the shades, oh, you're so seepy, hi. Um, anyway, for how pastel the shades were, I thought that they did work pretty well. Uh, I went in, I used my Blendiful to put on more foundation, I used it for my concealer, I used it for my powder. Tiny, tiny bit of texture, but I do think my skin is dry. This is not the tool for dry skin, I don't think. I think if you have drier skin, or I think if you have rosacea, this might be something to second guess before purchasing. Um, I do like it, I do think that I'll continue to use it, especially in the summertime when my skin is not so dry, but, um, I have dry skin up here and I think I have a little bit in here, but other than that, I think that my foundation looks okay. It didn't really blend my concealer down here as much as I would have liked it to, but at that point I was getting some texture and I was kind of probably being too light handed anyway. Um, I feel like the setting powder with that can be kind of tricky. Underneath my eyes, it works pretty good, but everywhere else sometimes I feel like it just, I need to get used to that kind of tool rather than a brush. So what I did, I contoured with my usual, the Benefit palette. I used my Clinique blush, I know. Uh, we have the Jeffree Star highlighter on the cheeks, Becca highlighter on the nose. I didn't wanna be too extra today. I went in underneath my lash line with that same purple, pink, uh, blue, and then the green in the inner corner. And then I also, on my very inner corner, I used Thaw Yeah, which is the shimmery shade here to just brighten up the inner corner a little bit. Mascara on the top lashes. I don't put mascara on my bottom lashes when I am teaching in case um, things go awry. Um, I used Aveda, they have a gold liner that I used on my waterline, which it is discontinued. Um, I don't even know what shade this was. Gypsum gold. And for lips, I used my Huda Gossip Girl lip liner. I used Tarte Namaste liquid lip. And then I put the Jeffree Star uh, lip ammunition in the shade Glazed on top of it and it really didn't do much of anything. So I went over top of that with the Huda Beauty lip strobe in the shade Mystical. And that is it for today, guys. I hope we enjoyed this lovely unicorn inspired look inspired by Miss Kiki, Miss Diva lover of all things pink and pastel and pretty. And as always, please leave comments below uh, letting me know what you hope to see in some more wellness videos, whether they are makeup inspired videos or not. Uh, I'm happy to cover all things wellness here on my channel. Check out Friday at noon, a yoga video will be posted. Uh, make sure, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't. It really does help me out a lot uh, working towards building a following here on YouTube. So I really do appreciate all of your support. Uh, I appreciate everybody who is watching. I hope you live happy, live free, live well. Namaste.